change the finances and better for the public to understand what our finances are and how much is allocated to each of our activities, including EMS services, fire services, training, um, capital uh, equipment purchases, building maintenance, and so forth. And right now, the way our charter of accounts is laid out, you really can't pull that stuff out. And so what we're looking at is, um, is rearranging that so that we will have that <coughs> for us. Once we have that, then the auditor will follow our chart of accounts so that the audit will then more easily coincide with, with what we submit in terms of our financial reports. So those things are in the work. The chief may have some other comments about that during his report. Um, in my view, we will have to uh, take a look at just who we're going to have to, who we're going to hire for next year. Um, we think that uh, auditors spent too much time auditing things that they didn't have to do, and we paid for that. And I guess that's been going on for some time. So uh, when, we, when it comes to picking an auditor for next year, which we don't have to do right at the moment, um, we're going to look at what the criteria really should be and uh, make sure that we have the audit as the state requires, not as some auditor thinks they ought to be because they've done it that way before. Um, there's one other item. Um, and anyway, I may think of it later. Uh, are there any questions about any of this? Are you in favor of I am in favor of the accrual basis because it will tell us a better, give us a much better picture of what our real financial status is. In other words, if we show, for example, on this cash worth report that we have a total of $704,864 in the bank, it looks great, except it isn't because probably 60% is allocated to, is already allocated to something. So that, so that, you know, it's really, we look at that $704,000, it's really, part of that's already allocated. If we had accrued up these expenses, for example, lease payments. I mean, I don't know where we are. Did we make all our lease payments so far this year? But there may be other things that, that are, that we make payments for leases and insurance and certain other things in lumps during the year. Well, if a lump, if cash is paid out in one month, it looks terrible. If it's not paid out in the next month, it, it looks great. So if you take those things and accrue them up, when you incur the liability, then we're not going to have this statement of cash worth. It's not going to be, we're not going to see anything. Well, if we want to, we can produce a regular balance sheet. Um, I don't like the monthly because they don't really reflect anything except that what's happening that particular month. But sure the accounting system, we just press a button and it'll produce one of these things. And that will show on an accrual basis right. where we stand in terms of assets, liabilities, and so forth. So quarterly would be a... Quarterly, whatever. I think the first thing to do is to get the changes made and then let the chief take a look at it and decide what would be most useful for him to communicate to us. Because what we want is what is the status of our funding, what is the status of our, our income stream, uh, where are our expenses going? When we take a look particularly at ambulance billings and this new SURF program, which is the program where our firefighters go out and work on fires, uh, I guess under federal jurisdiction when they, when they go out. And we get reimbursed for their time and for the use of our equipment. I think some of money is substantial. So we want to be able to capture all that and then project that out into the future. And, uh, Going from a cash to accrual isn't all that difficult if you understand the basics of it. And the new accounting software, I guess, did that anyway. That's why we don't have the, the revenue figures this month, and so we're still working on that. But I think our target, and, and I know the chief could comment on this later, is, is probably to um, implement this thing start of the next fiscal year. And that would be the best time to do it. But the other thing I think he may mention this is when we talk about our budget, we are going to have to, um, the chief's deadline for presenting us a budget is uh, October 15th, is that right? Correct, right. yeah. And uh, do we have to move to have you be the budget officer? 
That's correct. Uh, I don't know if that's been done as a you know permanent thing in the past, um, but it is in the Colorado State statute that uh, no later than October 1st, the board has to uh, you know designate a budget officer uh, responsible for the budget. Um, I, I would take that as kind of a formality, but uh, that is a, a motion that the board would have to make uh, prior to October 1st, so, uh, identifying. Uh, the person responsible for the budget. And the budget is essentially submitted to the board, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. The budget officer submits it to the board. Right. So, to me, the most logical person to be the budget officer would be the chief. Mr. Rudd, you can time make a motion. Why don't we move, I'd like to move therefore that we appoint the, uh, the chief as the budget officer for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. I'd be pleased to second that motion. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. <laughs> got to have another badge on the other side. I think unless there are any other questions, that's about where we are. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Do you want to get into the uh, budget discussion now? Or? Well, I'll let the chief cover that on that. I'll let the chief uh, um, I think that uh, you know, as uh, as Alex said, uh, we are looking uh, kind of the first steps that we're taking in the in the development of the budget is the uh, revision of the chart of accounts, and uh, one of the major uh, ways that we're looking at doing that is to break out the uh, existing um, chart of accounts, so remove what our enterprise funds versus what are our general funds in, in that process. So that uh, things like the SURF uh, grants, uh, anytime we get a grant, or ambulance transports, anything that has uh, revenue and, uh, and expenditures you know, that are a separate stream, we would uh, essentially budget them separately. Um, that'd make it a lot easier for us in terms of, you know, we look at, for example, our current uh, you know, status and it shows that we spent 500% of our wildland uh, budget this year and uh, the overwhelming majority of that is, uh, is reimbursable. Uh, so by breaking that out, we can uh, basically have our, our, our basic budget that addresses the expenses that we make. The SURF account would be an enterprise fund where we'd be receiving the reimbursements uh, and spending from that. Uh, rather than having it uh, rolled into the budget and <coughs> essentially clouding uh, the uh, the budget, uh, you know, in terms of us looking at what what we're spending of our local tax dollars. Uh, the ambulance revenue is another one that we would want to look at, uh, you know, in particular because uh, you know we do receive uh, about 35 percent of the of the district's income, uh, and we're not going to be able to break out all of the expenses that are attributable to that but we can at least get a fair picture of what it's costing us uh, to provide that service uh, versus what we're, what we're bringing in. Uh, so uh, we're looking at, at making those changes. Uh, another change that, um, that uh, we have discussed is that as we set up each of these budget areas, each uh, area would be assigned to a particular person in the department for management. Uh, and that way, any expenditures that are going to come out of that particular, uh, you know, budget area would have to be, um, you know, approved by whoever is the, the manager of that uh, budget line item. Uh, currently, you know, we, we've had kind of a, a little bit looser situation. If somebody feels like they need to run down to the hardware store and pick stuff up, uh, they do. Uh, but you know, we don't really have any kind of an approval process for that, and sometimes you know it comes back with receipts with somebody's name scribbled on it. And we don't even know who bought that particular item. So by changing that to uh, you know budget management system, I think that we can uh, keep better track of uh, uh, you know, how uh, how we're spending our money and, and uh, stay better on track with staying within budget on all of our line items. Any questions about that? Uh, one thing. Go ahead. No. 
Right. One other thing we discussed, and this may be down the road, is uh, the process for approving expenses, writing checks, and so forth. And I think we're, we're looking at an idea where we're essentially approving things. The board is signing checks and approving, looking at the approval from the chief and signing checks here. I think you've had the experience where um, the board approves things in advance and then the chief signs the checks. So we're looking, we're just discussing that. And at some point, we may bring a proposal to the board. That's, that, again, that's uh, definitely, you know, it's a different uh, kind of setup that uh, we, we had previously where I worked was that, uh, you know, the, essentially uh, it was called a, a list of warrants and essentially the board would approve all of those and then they would be returned back to the chief or the treasurer for, for signature rather than, you know, the, currently the way that we do it, uh, you know, it, it, it is, you know, any two board members that are, that are approving those. Um, so it's, it's a different uh, uh, way to look at doing that. But, uh, is this for routine expenditures? That'd be routine expenditures. Well, that would be, that's one of the questions. I mean, there are a couple of ways to think about it. One way is uh, to say that the chief has authority to sign checks uh, below a certain limit of money for routine expenses. The other way to do it is it, it may be approved just by the treasurer and the president. I mean, there, there are lots of combinations and permutations, and I think we'd rather kind of look at those and see what is the best in terms of not wasting everybody's time and yet still having a good control system. So just out of curiosity, Bill, did you have a uh, threshold in Washington? Uh, no, everything, you know, everything that was done was done by, you know, essentially approval of, you know, what was called the blanket vouchers. Uh, so, you know, all of the bills would be presented to the board. The board would then simply sign, you know, uh, the, the one uh, sheet of paper saying that they approved uh, all of the expenditures and then you know, they went back to the administration of the department to then run the, those checks. So all all expenditures were approved by the board. It just didn't, you know, it was done without having to, you know, call people up and say, hey, can you come in and sign checks sometime? Uh, you know, that, that's the primary difference between uh, what we're doing now and, and the way uh, the way that uh, we did it there. But does Marie Hamlin, how problematic? Has the current system been as far as running uh, financial efficiency for the district? For the check process, it's not it's not difficult um, as long as systems are running. The only glitch that we've had was when when we didn't have access to the program and we were running you know, needed. I was getting a little desperate <coughs> for someone to come in and sign when we finally did get things working. Um, so that was just, you know, very uncommon. So normally, I mean, but with, in moving to this accrual-based, you'd be approving basically uh, anticipated expenses right. to some extent. Um, and as far as those regular types of bills. But we, you, that way we would also know in advance because you would know what your payables are as to when do we pay workers' comp? When do we pay our lease payments? Um, and that would, you know, you'd be, it would be pretty obvious then. And it, it shouldn't be difficult to just run that warrant list as to what our payables are. I mean, to some extent, it's what, between the chief and us and Marie, what, what improves both our knowledge of our finances of uh, proper controls and assistance in, in communicating all this to our members and to the public and, and sort of that's why we're, we're probably not looking at this as well let's implement this one thing here and then wait and see how it works I think we're looking at an overall uh, suggestion that we make some system-wide philosophical changes in how we how we account for our money again with the idea and I think the chief probably can but I is being able without a lot of extra work to communicate if any questions from the public comes up about budgets and so forth, we can communicate that easily. And uh, and also of course increase our own efficiency. Okay. Uh, that's all I have.
Okay. Budget then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that'll take us to the fire chief's report. Okay. Um, obviously, the budget was uh, one of the um, one of the discussions on there. A uh, couple of other things, uh, you know, with the level of service uh, you know, we've been working on. We actually have restored the old software that we used to use for incident reporting, uh, so that we can actually start getting some useful data uh, out of that. But, uh, uh, that was uh, discontinued in um, January 2010. So between then and now, we don't have um, you know the, the data uh, that we really like as far as our response times and uh, and capabilities. And it's going to take some time now, um, you know, re-entering or and you know starting uh, from here to have that uh, you know that data um, be be uh, available to us. Um, the other major thing with the level of service that we have been talking about for quite a while is, is uh, that work session uh, to discuss uh, level of uh, service um, statements and prioritizing the services that uh, we provide. And uh, I think that uh, we, we should, if we'd like to stay on track for uh, the communication plan that we had discussed about getting uh, getting information out to the public about our service capabilities um, that we should probably um, start moving on that now that we're into the fall. So that would be a, a discussion that I would invite the board uh, to, um, to entertain. Um, other things that uh, we've had um, recently, uh, we <coughs> continue to work toward getting the uh, computer system uh, replaced. Uh, unfortunately, as Marie mentioned, um, the old system kind of uh, experienced a, a, a bit of a failure, um, and it's put us at some uh, a little bit of um, disadvantage in terms of running a number of our things, including uh, we had to basically reinstall our accounting software and uh, you know start working on a local system basis because our, our server and our network uh, still are down at this point. Uh, we had hired a, a new um, outfit to work on that, and uh, um, hopefully, uh, you know, we do have uh, the equipment is here. We just need uh, someone to, you know, actually get it all hooked up and, and get us back into in, in operation there. Uh, one of the other major things that has uh, just started recently, we we do have the EMS responder program uh, starting. Um, this is. Uh, first for the department, and uh, at least in uh, the, the recent past, in which we are going to accept members uh, to re you know, respond as EMTs uh, and not require them to also be firefighters. Uh, currently, about 70% uh, of our calls are ambulance calls, uh, so it, it's the overwhelming majority of, of the business that we do, and uh, you know, in the past we've had People that have been firefighters, but not necessarily, uh, you know, EMTs or first responders. Uh, this will actually, you know, uh, kind of uh, put a little bit more effort uh, in toward, you know, where our call volume is. And the other thing that it does is it uh, helps us attract those <coughs> volunteers who, you know, are interested in providing EMS, but not necessarily interested in, in fighting fire. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually, we have now have uh, 15 people that uh, have signed up uh, as volunteers in the program. Uh, quite a few of them uh, have also expressed uh, the interest in, in going on to firefighting. Uh, quite a few others have, uh, have been, you know, expressed that their primary interest is, uh, is in providing uh, medical care. Uh, I believe that that, that 15 people includes um, two PAs, uh, two RNs, uh, and uh, at least one paramedic. Uh, so you know, these are folks that are provide good service to the public that, uh, again, you know, would not have been interested, uh, you know, in providing the firefighting. Um, so I, I think that that moves us in that direction that we initially talked about about trying to find roles for um, you know local responders to to help our community. Uh, the mapping program is uh, is off and running, but again, that's going to take uh, several months for us to uh, uh, put together. Uh, and then the mutual aid, uh, you know, which we discussed last time about trying to get the automatic aid program back up and running, 
Uh, we did meet with uh, all of the chiefs, um, you know, on this part of uh, of the county as well as uh, Platte, um, Platte Canyon, uh, and we are looking into how we can uh, resolve some of the issues between having three different communication centers that uh, uh, don't necessarily uh, communicate very effectively, uh, and uh, you know how we can um, essentially set up the automated dispatching of, of resources in different <coughs> areas. Uh, so that process has started. Um, we're waiting uh, to hear back from the 911 Authority Board on some proposals uh, that we've made as far as uh, you know, trying to come up with uh, an improved way of, um, of uh, getting everybody dispatched out. Uh, in our community relations, uh, we're continuing to work with uh, several communities uh, on the FireWise program, and uh, uh, that, that continues to add uh, communities. So even though we're getting out of the wildland season, and getting close to the snow season, uh, we've still got folks that are, uh, are moving ahead with that and recognizing that that's uh, more of a, you know, a constant uh, issue that we're going to have to address here. Uh, one of the other things that, um, that I, I am planning to include in the budget uh, and starting to, to work toward uh, going into next year is uh, to include a community-wide newsletter to get better information about uh, the department uh, and the services that we provide out uh, to the public, and uh, you know, essentially let the public know what we're doing and you know what our capabilities are, and, uh, and also it hopefully educate people on you know uh, mitigation, fire prevention, injury prevention, and uh, things along those lines. Uh, with that, uh, you know, we are um, getting closer to getting the uh, CPR classes uh, for the public up and running. That uh, had been waiting on um, the availability of someone to run the instructor class. Uh, that's now scheduled, and, uh, and folks are starting to uh, to uh, get the training that they need to to, to implement that program. Um, I'd like to look at that uh, first aid classes, and then eventually one of the other programs that uh, I'd like to see us being able to offer to the community are the uh, you know essentially the the first responder or, or the wilderness first responder classes more of an advanced first aid program uh, to make that available to the public as well. Uh, we've had some interest uh, in, in, uh, you know, in those classes from people in the public. Uh, we're just getting to the end of the you know, main community event season. Uh, and, uh, pretty much for the last uh, two months we've had uh, you know, members of the department helping out uh, at community events on average twice a week. Um, it's been a very busy season for different, uh, different kind of events in the community. And uh, you know, that's been a, a very uh, a great opportunity for our folks to get out uh, and uh, you know, be out there you know, um, helping support a lot of the things that, that the uh, greater community does and, uh, and providing that visibility and, and uh, standby for events as well. So. Uh, Fortunately, I think uh, we're all looking to a little bit of a slowdown in that. Uh, it's been, um, as I said, pretty much every weekend uh, lately. So uh, that's um, while it's been good, it's it'll be nice to get a little break from that. Quick, quick, uh, oh, sorry. Quick, quick question on the newsletter. I, I, actually, I think it's first of all, I think it's a great idea. I, I applaud it. I have a simple question on that is, do we have a database that matches up with our district? I mean, how, how do you intend to distribute this? Um, that's actually what uh, uh, what I've done before is actually gotten that from the uh, the county assessor. Okay. Uh, so, and that, that's fairly simple to do. They, they have a database of all of the, you know, all of the uh, homeowners and, um, you know, residents in, in the district. I'd like, to, um, <clears throat> I'd like to really applaud you on the EMS responder program. I think that's, uh, that's an excellent way to, to go, and I think uh, as you're seeing, you're getting a nice response to in that. And the, thing, the question I have, <clears throat> is it possible to get IT experts in here and just chain them to the computers until it's done? <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but it seems to be kind of 
uh, something that goes with the territory with IT people is the reliability has not been uh, not been as great as I would like to have seen. Um, I think the next time he shows here, um, you know, probably try to do the same thing. We'll put guards at the door until you know the thing's actually hooked up. Great idea. Thank you. All right, thanks, Chief. Uh, legal update, uh, we did receive our annual reminder from the attorney on the budget process as well as the <coughs> routine budget calendar. So I have on the legal. Uh, citizens issues. Seeing none, that will take us to old business. Uh, the work retreat session. Uh, next week is SDA conference, so after that I'll Send out the email dates and see when we can set up a work session for the board. Are we speaking about a half day? Or probably this. Is that what you recommend? Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be probably, uh, I think that would cover what we need to do. Uh, but um, it's something you know, we can do lunch or whatever for folks. Okay. So I'll just select uh, the dates, give it the chief first, send them out to you guys. And hopefully we can find them when we can all. This will be in October. More than likely, possibly be before the end of the month, but we'll just have to see. But uh, my guess would be up to That would be good. Yes. <laughs> Seems uh, how it keeps going. So, okay. Um, any new business? See none. Any other business to be brought before the board? How about a motion to adjourn? Second. Those in favor? Aye. 1835. Good job. Good job.